how did the tradition of Shushingura allow you to approach and reveal this important Japanese story? Well, from the very beginning, we, we knew the history of the 47 Ronin, and we knew the historical basis uh, for what became Chushingura, which is the dramatic retelling of that story. And really, Chushingura gave us the creative license to make that story our own and dramatize it in a way that hadn't been seen before. And it was a unique opportunity because it allowed us to create a fantasy world unlike anything you've seen, but at the same time ground it on real human emotions that were inspired by these men that, that gave their lives. Notions of loyalty, honor, revenge, perseverance, all of these human emotions, these, these core principles, were things that we could build a fantasy world on. And not only could we build a Anglo-Saxon fantasy world, but what we did is we decided to build a Japanese fantasy world. And as a Westerner, I had been exposed to Miyazaki, uh, you know, fantasy anime, but I had never been a, exposed to a Japanese fantasy world that was done photorealistically on film. So for the first time, as a viewer, I was able to imagine and, and, and see a world of Onis and Tengu warriors and Kitsune witches. These were characters I, I was not versed in before and were brought to life through our research. Great. Um, and how important was it for you as you're explaining like to kind of instill and stay true to the authenticity of the story and the spirit while you were filming? I think from the very beginning we, we stay true to, as you said, the core ideology uh, of the 47 Ronin and of these men and what they sacrificed. But we also tried to stay true to uh, Japanese aesthetic and design. Now, we made that design our own, but we did the due diligence to investigate the culture, the arts, the design language, and tweak it see it through a Western point of view, see it through a Western lens and make it our own. So it's not just us parroting mm -hmm. what we believe to be a Japanese design, but really paying an homage, riffing, playing jazz on a Japanese design. And hopefully the Japanese audiences will notice our inspiration and points of inspiration. And for, for Western audiences, they'll just be taken to a place they've never been to before. Just like you were too. Um, so what elements helped inspire your vision and sort of visual style for this film? Because you're creating a right. world, like you said, that we haven't really seen before. I think in... We've seen a lot of fantasy in, in films in the West. And when we decided to go down this road of making a fantasy epic adventure, we started to look at source material, whether it was Hokusai, Hiroshigi, or as I said, as contemporary as, as Miyazaki. Mm -hmm. But we were able to go back and look at all the mythological and folkloric creatures and characters over hundreds, if not thousands of years to bring something to life that was new. And um, in terms of like the epic action in this film and how did you really want it to feel in 3D format? I mean, there's so many different characters and costumes. Uh, from the very beginning, we knew that we were going to shoot the film in 3D, that it was going to be a stereoscopic shoot. It was not going to be a conversion. And we began to do our due diligence in terms of figuring out process. And while the scope of the film is something that we have become accustomed to seeing as full CGI. Mm -hmm. The process of shooting stereo lent itself better to constructing gigantic sets and doing it for real so that you could touch it. And what we did is we built a foundation where we created real sets, we had real costumes, real actors, and a real world that even though it was shot in London and Budapest, when you stepped onto those castles it felt like you were transported into Japan. And once we had that foundation, we were able to populate it with CG characters, CG augmentation, to really create a mixture that you as a viewer would not be able to see the seam right. in between what is real and what is created in a computer. Yeah, well, that's great. And um, in general, can you kind of tell us what is what are the Ronin and, and who are sure. these men? Uh, Ronin are, are samurai without a master. Mm -hmm. They're disgraced samurai. 
<laughs> the story very simply is about these samurai that lose their master, Lord Asano, and are banished from their land and become Ronin. As Ronin, they lose all of their privileges and are seen as not even second class, but tertiary class citizens. And from there, they stoop to conquer. They hide, they lie in wait, they wait for the right time, and then they regroup. And after two years, they come back and, and they seek revenge and they get it and they pay the ultimate price for it. And uh, what does Keanu Reeves bring to the role of Kai as one of the instrumental one of the things figures? That we, one of the things that we talked about was Keanu has a quiet power to him. He's a very stoic figure. And he reminds me, especially in this film, kind of a new era of Keanu, which is the Clint Eastwood Keanu sort of uh, a little bit more gruff. He's got the beard. He's a little bit more swarthy. <laughs> yeah, he's wise, swarthy, powerful, quiet, uh, but you don't want to screw with him. <laughs> and at any moment, boom, 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 he'll be on top of you. So I liked that. I liked that. That's what Keanu is bringing in real life to it, that quiet power that he always has. But he was able to push it up even one notch further for this role. And uh, please tell us a little bit about the extraordinary Japanese characters and working with all of that ta all the, of their talent. The performers. Yeah. I think for Western audiences, there's a, there are a lot of characters, uh, or rather, for Western audiences, there are a lot of actors and performers that we've seen in a movie here and there. And then there's other performers that we've never seen before. Hiro Sonata, of course, is a master master craftsman. He's a master actor and he's a master swordsman. He's known in, in Japan and he's known internationally from The Last Samurai in the West to Twilight Samurai mm -hmm. uh, over here in Japan. He was a staple. Uh, Rinko Kikuchi we know of through Babel, of mm -hmm. course, uh, through Pacific Rim. And Tadanabu Asano we know, of course, from... He's been in Western films like Thor, uh, but at the same time, he's been in cult Japanese classics right. like Ichi the Killer. Mm -hmm. So, for me as a filmmaker, it was equivalent of making an Eastern version of Ocean's Eleven. Mm -hmm. I got to cherry pick the right. best of the best of the best. And Min Tanaka plays Lord Asano. He's a performance artist, a dancer, somebody who's uh, a big name and presence in the art world over here. To be able to bring that to a Hollywood blockbuster is, is also a step in a new direction. Uh, we have new talent as well. Uh, Jin Akanishi, Koshi Bazaki, two big, big stars here in Japan, but at the same time, they've yet to uh, branch out uh, outside of Japan into the West, into Europe and America. Mm -hmm. And we think this is going to be their opportunity to do so. That's wonderful. Well, thank you 